Africa is world renowned for its wildlife, animals known for their size, elusiveness, and unpredictable temperament. I'm Hunter Ellis, and I'd like to invite you along on my journey to learn more about these animals and the environment in which they live. We've got our work cut out for us. Let's get started. In Swahili, the word safari means journey, and we're about to undertake a grand 3D journey that spans hundreds of miles across three nations. Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. I'm up here several hundred feet above the Maasai Mara Game Reserve in Kenya. This is the best way to get a good perspective of this majestic landscape. Just check out that sunrise. The range of animals down there is unbelievable. From the gentlest creature to the fiercest beast from spectacularly beautiful to a face only a mother could love. From ruthless predators to defenseless prey, we're going to see them all, including what's known as the Big Five. Lions, leopards, elephants, buffaloes, and rhinos. And we're going to witness one of the greatest spectacles on Earth, the annual migration across the Serengeti of 1.5 million wildebeest, as well as 100,000 zebras, gazelles, and other animals. You can see it starting right down there. I'll catch up with these guys later as they make their marathon trek across the African plain. But right now, it's time to get down there and get you right up close. The first step is to catch up with my guide, Karanja. We're meeting up near the Maasai Mara Game Reserve in a village called Narok. Karanja is one of the most experienced wildlife guides and cameramen in all of Africa. Karanja! Hey, man! Hey! What's up? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Welcome, have a, have a seat. You have to meet my friend uh, Moses. Moses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, this is David. David. All yeah, right. Can Good I offer you a drink? Yeah. Love one. Coke, Coke, please. It's been a long trip so far, oh. but we're just getting started. Yeah? yeah. Did you have problems at the airport? No problems, no, no problems. problems. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So tell me, what's your mission here? I've come to Africa to see the animals, to meet the people, oh. and find out what it's, thank you, something. To find out what it's all about. Good, I'll take you around the country and East Africa, and I'm sure you'll enjoy the animals. So I travel light coming over here. I need some supplies for the safari. Is there a good market close by that I may be able to pick some stuff up? I'll take you to the market. You'll be spoiled for choice. The market is just nearby. So, so but you must do bargaining. In Africa, we do bargaining. Do you have space? Do you have enough space in your car for that? I'll make the space. Let's yes. do it. Let's we got go. a big Jeep. Let's go. Moses. Moses, yeah. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you after this trip. Kwaheri. 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 On safari. <laughs> the weather is nice, animals, everything. Okay, just need those, just those supplies. Can we get into the jeep? Let's go. I always love exploring the markets in other countries because it really gives you a flavor for the culture. This one looks to be pretty exciting. Well, it seems like you can get pretty much anything here, huh? Let's check out. See what you are interested in. A bicycle, if you want a bicycle, we have bicycles here. Uh -huh. you, can, you can ride yourself in the park at your own risk, at your own risk, my friend. That's why I got a Jeep, so I wouldn't have to ride a bicycle through the savannah. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Ooh, avocado. Perfect. Asante sana. Tell Latifa goodbye in Kiswahili. Latifa, 
goodbye mkiswahili kwa heri thank you kwa heri latifa kwa heri okay kwa heri ya safari salama no 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 baki salama baki salama baki salama baki salama all right let's get moving oh jambo jambo na piga picha that's great you know that's awesome so people have time and you know it's blah everyone is happy to see one another yeah and that's what make africa ticks so it's hard to leave but uh, i know we got a long way to go uh, let's go let's go man we can spend two nights here yeah okay <laughs> stocked up and ready to go and it's into the wild we don't have to go far to see a creature that really stands out One of the things I love about the giraffe is to me it really shows where I am right here in the heart of Africa. You can see their necks and their whole bodies moving across the giant savanna out here and it just says Kenya. I'm impressed by the size and grace of this magnificent creature, the tallest animal in the world. Believe it or not, a giraffe's neck has the same number of bones as humans, seven vertebrae, but they're a heck of a lot longer. That neck is about six feet long. The cool thing about these giraffe is that this is their home. They're comfortable and they're allowing me in it and to share this experience with them right now. The giraffe may look gangly, but can actually reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour at a full gallop. Giraffes can also stay hydrated by filling their four stomachs with as much as 12 gallons of water. One way to tell male and female giraffes apart is similar to the way we tell men and women apart, but it's not what you're thinking. Females have tufts of hair on the horns on top of their heads. The men, they're bald. I think they've seen enough of me. They're heading off for greener pastures and more food. I've entertained them enough, I think. Here's an animal that hangs out a heck of a lot lower than a giraffe. Warthogs may not be pretty, but they sure are distinctive.
They don't actually have warts, but they get their names from the four bumps on their face that look like warts. They don't have fur or fat, so they like to hang out in holes to stay warm or cool off and to keep out of sight from deadly predators. In fact, Karanja has just spotted a nearby leopard on the prowl. It's amazing to see these guys climb. Pound for pound, they're the strongest of the cats. They've got reason to strut with such confidence. They're extraordinary leapers and can kill prey much larger than themselves. They have the amazing ability to drag their kill up into the trees where they can dine at leisure, safe from lions or hyenas. Leopards usually do their hunting at night, but this one is venturing out for a midday meal, and it may have its eye on one of these warthogs. The marks on its coat are not actually spots, but irregular circles called rosettes. It's rare to see these cats on the prowl. They're master stalkers, using the tall grass as cover. Lucky for these guys, this leopard doesn't seem to have an appetite for warthogs. It looks like these warthogs are safe for now. They can start poking around in the ground for their own food. They use the hard cartilage on their snout to root out grass and bugs. You might see them running with their tails in the air so they can spy each other from afar. The males are usually looking for mates. Chronically promiscuous is the animal kingdom's term for them. They're not real family men, just roaming the savanna for food and females. It's a new day out here on the savanna, and this mother cheetah and her cubs are taking refuge from the heat. The females do the hunting and raise the cubs on their own. Cheetahs hunt during the day, but they like to do it early in the morning or early in the evening when it's cooler. This mother's sniffing for food. She's probably catching the scent of the Thompson gazelles grazing nearby. The gazelles are their main food source. And they're fast, making them a tough catch. But a determined cheetah mom is a formidable match. And this one has six cubs to feed. It's amazing and rare to see six cubs. It's tough for them to survive out here. These cubs will give up their gray coats and start to look like mom if they beat the odds and make it to about four months. This dirt mound serves as mom's watchtower for both prey and predator. This is an absolutely beautiful sight. And I'm a new father, so I can relate to this right here. A mother cheetah and her cubs. These are a couple of uh, weeks old. She's a proud mother. And what else do you want? That is beautiful. The cheetah has a, a unique characteristic. It, it's the fastest animal, so it doesn't have to strategize the whole time. It just goes for it. 
but it's also uh, the weakest in the cat family. So it has to kill and hide. That is a position of attack. That's an attack position. She may have seen a gazelles. Look at the gazelles. The gazelles are right there. Oh, yeah. So she's seen the gazelles, and she might be wanting to go for, for it. Now, right now, behind me, there's a lot of drama unfolding. The cheetah and her six cubs have spotted a group of Thompson gazelles, and she's on the move right now. Look at the behavior yep. of the kids. The oh, kids yeah. have to wait. This is, this is incredible. Look at this. She Look can tell she's, she's going into stalking mode. Now, she'll look for a safe covered spot to feed her cubs before other predators come calling on them. But it looks like she's sensing something wrong. In fact, Karanja and I only count five cubs. You can hear the cub crying out for the mother right now, so hopefully she'll go stash the kill and then come back and find her young cub. Unfortunately, as she's hunting, the, the hyenas and uh, all these other guys are also watching. This is absolutely heart-wrenching to witness. It's so tough for these cubs to survive out here, exposed. The cub can only cry out and hope that his mom comes back. The food is safe. Let's get the baby. You can get rid, you can actually leave the food on its own. That's not precious. Wow, look at that. She's taking the whole brood along. And now they're reunited. Six cubs. Six cubs. Six beautiful cubs. Look Mother at that. Cheetah and her family. Right now we're we're witnessing a mother cheetah and her six cubs, and she's teaching them how to eat. That's right. Um, look at the behavior of the cubs. That's unbelievable drama to witness firsthand. The, the hunt, the lost cub, the mother returning with the other cubs to pick the lost cub up, yep. and then take them all as a family yeah. to the kill so they can eat together. And make sure that the kids also are learning how to eat how to kill, how to take care of themselves. All these things are happening at the same time. It's, it's an incredible story of survival and instinct. That's right, that's right. I mean, had there been no learning experience for these kids, they'll be vulnerable when they get big. I think she's shown us a lot. I think we let, let her eat with her cubs in, in peace and go explore some more, what do you say? I would say the same. Come on, let's move on. While the cheetahs enjoy their meal, not far away, we spot another family searching for food. How's this for an amazing experience. The largest living land mammal. And I'm just about 50 feet away.
we've come across a herd of about 20 elephants. It's amazing to be up close and personal in their environment like this. I definitely don't want to get any closer because mother elephants are very protective of their young. Now, a good rough estimate to tell how old an elephant is is when they reach the mother's belly, that's when the Africans say they're one year. I could sit back and watch these guys all day. This group of mothers is actually related, and they'll travel across the savanna with their young. <laughs> and you can tell they're just like human mothers. They like to scold their young when they get out of hand here. This is actually a great place for the elephants to hang out during this time of day, because until they reach about one year of age, they're vulnerable to being attacked by lions. There aren't many animals that pose a threat to these elephants, but we've spotted one of those threats nearby, the king of the jungle. There goes a lion on the hunt. Now this is actually the time of day where the female lions will hunt, and we just, just left a herd of baby elephants right behind us. Lions stalking through the grass. We'll wait here and see how it plays out. Now, we see one cat. There's a good chance that there's others nearby because they hunt in groups. But it's impossible to find them until the last second at all this tall grass. Karanja, the amazing thing here is that we have three lions over there two right here blended into the bush, and then these two. But give me an idea of the strength and power of the lion. First and foremost, these guys can do 50 kilometers per hour when they are going for the kill. That's amazingly That's high quick. speed for their size. That's quick. Plus the power they have. These guys walk majestically. You can see them walking. They are very confident. And in recent years, how have the lion numbers been doing? Have, have, have they been increasing? No, they've actually, the loud numbers in recent years have actually been going down. Mm -hmm. the, the numbers have been on the decline in recent years. It would be a shame to, to lose the lion. It is one beautiful animal. I would not imagine uh, nature without lions in my life. I would not imagine. Nature without lions is not nature at all. And everything must be done to protect the environment in which these guys are operating. Karanja just spotted another of the big five, and we're on our way again. Just look at all those Cape buffalo. 
Now they're also known as water buffalo, and they can travel in groups from a few hundred to a few thousand. Most of these are females. Males live apart in bachelor groups from the age of four. They look mean, and Cape Buffalo have a reputation for being unpredictable and dangerous. If you see a lone bull like this one, definitely don't mess with him, because he's one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. But in actuality, if you leave them alone like I am, they're pretty peaceful. Water buffalo live on grass, much like cows, so they like to live in rain-soaked areas like this. Out here, the water buffalo endure all sorts of ticks, fleas, flies, you name it. But they get a break from birds called oxpeckers who camp out on their backs. They call them the tick bird. They feast on all these ticks and bugs. It's a great deal for the buffalo and a whole lot of other African species. A free ride for a cleaning service. The tick birds help in another way. They're like an alarm bell for imminent danger. When you see them panic and fly off, it can be a warning that a predator may be near. Their horns were no match for the killing power of a lion. After making fast work of the buffalo, the lion's bellies are full, and it's nap time. As soon as the lions get their share, other jungle carnivores move in to scavenge the leftovers. Vultures are like machines. They can digest meat in any stage of decay, and they're immune to diseases that would kill any other creature. Now, the hyenas muscle in on the action. Their howling scream and well-known laughter can travel three miles to alert other clan members of a fresh kill. The hyenas are enjoying a bit of a buffet back there, huh? Yeah, I mean, the lions have killed. They ate their bit and uh, left. And the hyena comes and uh, does the rest of the job, which means clearing everything that is left. They're doing a good job. I mean, you can just hear them crunching all the bones. These guys have the toughest jaws. They have tougher jaws than lions, and you can be sure that everything that is left is going to be torn apart. The only parts of a hyena's prey not fully digested are hair, horns, and hooves. Nothing goes to waste out here in the animal kingdom. We've witnessed the lion's domination over the animal kingdom. But there's a species here who once lorded over them. Once upon a time, these Maasai warriors were expected to kill a lion with a spear as a rite of passage into manhood. These days, the lions are protected, but the Maasai maintain their traditions and are eager to share their rich culture with visitors to their homeland. Jambo, hunter, hunt, sopa. Ah, Jambo, sopa, sopa. Now I'm about to get a taste of what it's like to be a real Maasai. 
The Maasai lead a nomadic life, raising cows and other livestock. It's an honor for me because I've heard many great stories of the Maasai. So, oh. so I'm becoming a warrior? You are becoming now a senior elder warrior. A senior elder warrior, huh? Yes. <laughs> this is an incredible honor to be welcomed into a village like this. Something I thought I'd never do. <laughs> Hopefully I'm an acceptable dancer. <laughs> It's the one part I can remember. The highest Maasai honor is to be offered the blood of the cow. Now we are going to show you the way we get blood. From the neck of the cow. From the neck of the cow. So you can see really very sharp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, this so sharp. This morning we have shown blood. See? Ah, OK. Mm. Is this now, do you do this every day? No, they are special occasions. Special occasions. Yeah. And, and you do this in a way that the cow doesn't even feel it, right? It's not, no. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The cow can never feel it. Ah. This is actually quite an honor that they're allowing me to be here for this. And the, the Maasai do this on special occasions, so. I guess my arrival today is a special occasion. And uh, if I'm welcome, I will join them. Uh, my turn? Yeah. Yes, slowly. Thank you. Slow? Yeah, slow. Very slow? Yeah. Multiple swallows? OK. Yeah, poly, poly. Slow, slow. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah. Am I a warrior now? Yeah, you are a warrior. Warrior, all right. Yeah. That was different, but a great honor all the same. This vast landscape occur these tiny oases. Water holes like this one are vital. Now, most of them are seasonal and depend upon rains to fill them up, but the ones that are heavily trafficked by elephants can actually last year round. The elephant's weight packs them down and creates kind of an artificial seal. Simply put, water holes like this one and the role the elephants play in preserving them is vital to keeping the wildlife here. These watering holes aren't just a source of life, they're a source of fun. Elephants like to fling this mud all over themselves to deflect the sun and lower their body temperature. They also flap their ears to fan their bodies. Just like kids on a hot summer day back at home, you can see the elephants cooling off in the mud and the water. Having a lot of fun. Let's just look at this little guy coming up over here. Uh oh, you gonna come say hi to me? Yeah, you wanna share the mud? Huh? <laughs> just like human kids, come back all dirty after a day of play.
I'm learning more about elephants as my safari continues. I was surprised to learn that just like us, they are left or right-handed. But I was even more surprised to learn that they're left or right tusked. The favored side wears down from constant use. An elephant's trunk is so versatile, it can kill a lion or caress a baby elephant. On your typical safari, a good 4x4 four four is usually the vehicle of choice. But here at Murchison Falls, the mighty Nile bisects the park. So a good boat safari is the best way to get up close and personal with some of the animals. Let's hop on board, see if we can go see some hippos. Now we can go. Oh, look at that guy. I'm sure the crocodiles are just down the way. Let's see if he pops up. There he is. That's pretty cool. Just look at all those hippos. It's so cool to be able to get this close to a big family of hippos like this. Whoa, you see the size of that fish? Look at that. Only on the Nile River. Look at that. Now, actually, I feel quite safe here because hippos are generally happy in water. The place I don't want to be is in between the hippo and the water when he returns in the morning. Hopefully, that rule holds true. Hippopotamus is Greek for river horse. Hippos spend as much as 16 hours a day submerged in water to keep their massive bodies cool under the hot African sun. They also secrete a red substance that acts as a powerful sunscreen. The hippo's nose, eyes, and ears are positioned high on their head for good reason. When they're almost fully submerged, they can still see, hear, and smell what's happening all around them. It's incredible to get this close to the stomping ground of the hippopotamus.
Hippos can't swim or even float. With their thick hides alone, weighing a 1,000 pounds, their bodies are too dense. Instead, they walk along the riverbed in a slow motion gallop, lightly touching the bottom with their toes like graceful aquatic ballet dancers. Hippos are incredible from afar, but even more amazing up close. Hippos usually live in mixed gender groups of about 15 to 20, led by a territorial male who acts as the primary protector against threats of all kinds. One reason Ranger Saitoti carries a rifle. So Saitoti, how long have you been a game ranger? Well, I've been here for seven years. It's my seven year. I mean, they look just like giant boulders in the river. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. But, and do they have any natural predators out here that they need to worry about? Well, they don't have actually predators. What, the, the only thing that can attack it is uh, a human being, and sometimes uh, a lion, but it can only attack by taking the calf, but not a, they cannot attack a bull hippo. So the young hippos are vulnerable, but the adults are, are fairly safe. Yeah, sure, yeah. What's your, what's your favorite thing about the hippo? I mean, you, you obviously love all the animals out here, but... Right, one, one thing about a hippo, when you actually look about the hippo, when you look at the ears, they almost resemble that of a human being. And when you see, you find people laughing because it actually resembles. So we really love that about the hippo. Yeah. So if you have hippo ears, it's, uh, it's a we good thing? Ears. Yeah. I'm thrilled to catch up with a vast wildebeest migration. It's one of nature's greatest spectacles. The wildebeest loves to feed on these tall grasses in the savanna, but it does make them vulnerable. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm smack dab in the middle of a buffet served up for the lion and the spotted hyena. You can tell by their sheer numbers that the wildebeest is a very social animal. In fact, the males will actually group together, leave the herd, and search for a mate. It's kind of like a wildebeest rite of passage. A group of guys out trolling the plains looking for a date. Wildebeest travel in large herds all through the day and night, grazing constantly. Their epic Serengeti migration takes place each spring and covers up to a thousand miles. I've been following the wildebeest and zebras as they make their way towards the river for a crossing. And it's very interesting to watch the behavior of the herd. As they cross the open savanna, they'll change their direction based on unseen threats. And once again, as you can see behind me, the herd has come to a halt. There's an open field in front of them and they sense danger. There's a good chance there's predators laying in wait. Looks like they found a safe way, hopefully. They're on the move. Time to follow them. Ready? Lions. Out of nowhere, several have appeared, blocking access to the river. Clearly, that's what had spooked the herd, and for good reason. Several have fallen prey to the lions. Their earthly journey will end here. That was awesome. Out of nowhere, like two bolts of lightning, came two lions. 
and just scattered the wildebeest. But that was a rare treat to get to witness something like that right here in nature. It looks like the rest of the wildebeest have reformed and are headed back to the river. A few brave ones ventured down the embankment. But now, there's another deadly obstacle, crocodiles. Looks like this crossing will be delayed again. Can't say that I blame them. I'm not crossing that river. Seems like everywhere we go on our safari, we come across amazing apes. And I've learned quite a bit about them. Genetically, humans are 98% identical to apes. And just like us, they have 10 fingers and 10 toes, small ears on the side of their head, and 32 teeth. But unlike most of us, their arms are much longer and their big toes look like thumbs. I've also learned the difference between an ape and a monkey. Apes don't have tails, but monkeys do. Everywhere I travel here, I seem to come across hundreds of baboons. They're usually foraging for food or grooming one another. But baboon hygiene is not just about removing insects and dead skin. It establishes lifelong social bonds. Reaching the greatest of the great apes, requires an epic hike up into the mist of Uganda's Virunga Mountains. What awaits us is nothing short of amazing. It's incredible. About 10 feet on the other side of this bush is the giant silverback. And in this tree behind me here is one of the young females from the family. Yeah, you can hear the gorillas moving in the bush around me.
very calm and they've accepted me here in their home. And now I'm gonna try and work my way around, get to know each of them a little bit better. The silverback is the patriarch of the group. And heed this warning, never stare down the silverback. If he feels you're threatening his domain, he can toss you like a rag doll. Unbelievable. Let's go follow him, see where he's heading. He weighs over 400 pounds and just look here and back there. Just look at all this vegetation he mashed down on his way up to find more food. Let's go. Due to poaching, there are only about 700 mountain gorillas left in the world. We've got to do everything we can to protect them. This is truly a once in a lifetime experience. Spent an hour with him. It's hard to leave, but this, is, uh, this will be an experience I will never forget. I've always wanted to walk with the dinosaurs, and spending some time here with a rhinoceros may be as close as I ever get. If you're interested in viewing rhinos, Lake Nakuru is the place you want to be. Currently, they have over 100 rhinos in the park, both white rhinoceros and black rhinoceros. And as you can see, there's two large white rhinoceros right behind me. The rhino's ancestry dates back as far as 23 million years. These days, the rhino has no predators in the animal kingdom, except, of course, the poacher. In the last 40 years, the number of rhinos in the world has dropped a heartbreaking 90%. Both the black and white rhinos have two horns, the larger located at the front of the nose. The prized horns are made of thick intertwined hair that cultivates from the skull. Despite their massive size, rhinos can reach speeds of 40 miles per hour, just like a racehorse. But they can't maintain that speed for very long. They have a well-developed sense of smell and hearing, but bad eyesight. 
which is why you sometimes see them charging for no reason. I think I'm gonna stay well out of their way. Despite its size and belligerent reputation, the rhino usually exists peacefully among all sorts of animals, including these stunning flamingos. This is a technicolor dream. Standing by the water's edge and watching the symphony of pink is definitely one part of this safari I will never forget. The flamingo's unique looking head and body sit atop two skinny but sturdy legs, which aren't as delicate as they appear. They are incredibly strong and keep the flamingo balanced. African flamingos have beautiful black stripes that are best seen when they're airborne. Flamingos are all about conserving energy in flight. They only take to the sky when there is sufficient wind to help them move without too much effort. Another animal that coexists in this space is the zebra. Zebras are tight-knit. There's safety in numbers, and zebras always try to stick together with the herd for protection against predators who will try to single out one of them for attack. To beat the hot African sun, zebras have shiny coats that deflect 70% of the incoming rays. These zebras will join the wildebeest in their great migration. I'm standing along the bank of the Mara River, and as you can tell by the tracks on the other side, this is one of the places where the wildebeest and zebras will cross. Now these waters right here are filled with hippos and crocs, and that'll be a huge threat as they cross from one side to the other. The Mara River is the scene of many a life and death drama. The deadliest creatures in these waters are definitely the crocodiles. 
Nile crocodile is one of the stealthiest and most dangerous animals in all of Africa. Except for the adult hippos, they'll attack nearly anything that crosses their path. They can eat up to half their body weight in one feeding. Crocs can eat so much that larger crocs can go almost a year without eating again. Crocodiles can digest anything they eat, including bone. To chop up big prey, they clamp it in their immensely powerful jaws and violently spin their whole bodies to rip off chunks. They're ruthless predators. They lie in wait at all the river crossings, and they feed on the zebra and the wildebeest as they migrate north to the Maasai Mara. We watched as a family of zebras climbed down the riverbank, looking for a safe passage to unite with their clan on the other side. It was absolutely awesome to watch as the zebras tried to cross the river and the crocodile, out of nowhere, attacked. The zebras cried out from either side of the river, urgently searching for a safe place to reunite the family. They all made it across, including the zebra wounded in the croc attack. He's in pain, but the game wardens say he's very likely to survive. Witnessing that drama makes me wonder what the great wildebeest migration will have in store. And it so happens that a huge herd has been spotted heading this way. One wildebeest will step forward and lead thousands of others, like ancient warriors heading into battle. This is the epic spectacle I've been waiting for. Thousands of wildebeests making their desperate trek across the Mara River from Kenya into Tanzania. No passports needed. And it looks like all their strategy paid off. All the wildebeest survived the crossing this time. The wildlife isn't the only spectacle on the safari. As we make our way across Africa, we encounter some of the most stunning vistas I have ever seen.
I've just arrived at Ambicelli National Park, which itself is very small, but it's known for some really big things. Supposedly, there are large groups of hippos and elephants, and just across the border in Tanzania is Mount Kilimanjaro. So I'm hoping to get some spectacular views if the weather cooperates. Let's go. This is Lake Ambicelli, which, as you can see, isn't much of a lake at the moment. And actually, it only fills up about once every decade. But for me, the landscape here is one of the beautiful things about Ambicelli. You have the barren, dry, cracked lake bed, golden plains full of zebras, gazelle, and wildebeest, swamps that are home to hippos and elephants, and trees where baboons and giraffe feed. And it's all laid out beautifully at the foot of Africa's tallest mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is waiting for us right there. And I think we're gonna to get to take a look at it. And this is gonna be how. Don't forget about us. It's been hiding from me ever since I got here. So now I'm going up through the cloud layer and I'm gonna see if I can get a peek at the top. of Africa right behind me, Mount Kilimanjaro. What a spectacular view. Now right now it feels like I'm actually level with the top of Kilimanjaro, but I'm at 10,000 feet and the peak is 9,000 feet above me. So that gives you a true appreciation for just how big that mountain is. Fittingly, the last stop on my journey is a place that's serving wildlife by helping to bring elephant populations back from the brink. We're here at the Athumba Elephant Orphanage. In a remote northern region of Savo East exists a very special place whose sole purpose is to rescue orphaned elephants from the wild, nurture them back to health, and reintroduce them to nature when they're ready. I've been invited here today and given the unique experience to get hands-on with one of the world's largest mammals. It is absolutely incredible to stand side by side with these animals who are young. I mean, this is an 11-year-old elephant. Kilaguni here, he's about three years old. But they're massive. They're gentle giants. You can just feel their strength, but yet they're very calm. And they allow me to walk along with them and share a day in the life of an elephant. Oh. That is what you say, hanging out with the elephants. <laughs> They've just welcomed me to the herd.
Hey, here we go. This guy's a little bigger, huh? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> that felt good. So Benjamin, tell me a little bit about the Elephant Orphanage and, and what you guys do here on a daily basis. Yeah, we take care of uh, the orphans, of which actually they come all over Kenya. And uh, they are here due to different circumstances. Like what's a typical circumstance that would lead these guys to be orphaned? That's uh, mostly poaching. Most of them are poaching victims. Really? Their mothers were poached and the ivory taken by these poachers. Poachers' greed for the female's ivory tusks shatters elephant families and leaves these little guys to fend for themselves. We are one family. So like when you leave your parents and go far away, sometimes you remember to come back and say hi to them. So for the elephants, family matters. Yeah, family matters most. Traumatized orphans who've lost their mothers are extremely vulnerable to depression and even death. It's believed that elephants experience a vast range of human-like emotions, perhaps even more intensely than humans. Foster parents, like Benjamin here, and the other devoted elephant keepers, stay with the orphaned elephants 24-7, traveling with them during the day and sleeping with them at night. And once you find them, how hard is it to bring them into the orphanage and, and then wean them? After getting them out in the wild and bring them to Nairobi Nasari, that's where they are taken straight away. And there they get to be given milk to be treated if they have uh, I have got any kind of disease, and uh, they learn some few things of like uh, not to knock down the human onlookers, and they are taught a bit of discipline. Are they scared of the humans at first? At first, they are scared so much. This becomes their learning ground to be reintroduced to the wild. Yeah, that's it. And how many elephants over the years have you reintroduced to the wild? Uh, here in Itumba already we have. Uh, Introduced to the world are uh, 25 orphans. Wow. And they do come from time to time to the stockade to say hi. They come visit? They come and visit. This is very cool at the moment. These are wild elephants, completely wild, that are coming here to say hello to the orphans and share the watering hole with them. And I'm standing, I mean, arm's length away from a three, four ton wild elephant. It's, uh, Pretty incredible. That is an 18-year-old elephant that is massive. Almost twice my height, probably three, four tons. So you can tell that the big one that's wild is very interested in who I am and what I'm doing here and why I'm interacting with the younger elephant. Yet, as long as I'm calm and don't push it too close, Should be okay. Now, if you want to get a sense for how tough these animals are and how well they're built for this type of environment, just look at what she's eating right now. These giant thorns. This is a two inch long thorn that would just pierce right through my hand. Yeah, she's eating it like it's nothing, like it's sugar cane, something sweet that she loves. What's she doing now? Ah, uh, yes, she wants you to put a thumb or a yeah? finger in. Oh, that is wild. 
That is wild. So gentle. So big, yet so gentle. It's amazing. And, uh, that's where I put a lot of trust in Kilaguni. They like to have their tongue scratched. Yeah, huh? <laughs> okay, what do I, how do I feed an elephant? This, check this out. This is awesome. Look at, I mean, they know how to drink it on their own, huh? Yeah, there are some who knows how to hold the bottle by themselves. That is impressive. Now, what is in this milk? It's only plain milk, powder milk, that is, and a bit of porridge. Ooh, it smells good. Yeah, smells good the next bottle. All right, next. Hello again, and, I want to move And how much milk will one of these guys drink every day? They drink, uh, each take, they take uh, 12 pints, uh, three times per, per day. It smells like, um, it's like protein, like, uh, like a protein formula. It's a replacer milk from Israel. But in the Nairo Nairobi right. nursery, they take a semen. One more. They know how to count. She's counting. <laughs> Let me hold it. Yeah. Now, these guys can put down some serious milk in no time. Want to hold it? Want to hold it? Yeah. So trusting. Very trusting. All right. They finished. She knows that she has taken the three bottles. That was pretty cool. Well, it's gonna be really hard leaving here after spending a day with these guys, but I'm hopeful I can return to Savo East in another 10 or 15 years and look out on a giant watering hole and see a big bull with no tail and know that's my buddy Kilaguni from Athumba. I hope that someday you'll all get to take your own African safari and see these amazing animals for yourself out in the wild. But for now, so long from Africa. I'll see you on the next 3D Safari. Thanks so much for joining me on another adventure I will never forget.